Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, please accept my congratulations to you on your assumption of your esteemed position that you hold as Speaker of this National Assembly. Also, I would like to congratulate Deputy Speaker, Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker. Let me also welcome and congratulate all of the new parliamentarians who have entered this August House. I hope you realize you have accepted a Herculean task and I hope that you are prepared to do what it takes to represent the persons who expect guidance from you. Mr. Speaker, I join my colleagues in adding my contribution to this PPPC 2020 budget entitled Our Plan for Prosperity. And yes, Mr. Speaker, there is a silver lining, a lining of prosperity. Mr. Speaker, and this prosperity is not only for one category or one facet of our community. It is for all of us. And I say us because even we who are in this house will benefit from that prosperity. All of our people, our families, our friends, all Guyanese will benefit from it. Mr. Speaker, before I continue, let me extend congratulations to the Honorable Member Juan Egil for his eloquent and commanding presentation of his first national budget. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker, are also extended to the technical staff of the Ministry of Finance as well as the other line agencies without whom the speedy compilation of this budget would not have been realized. Mr. Speaker, over the last two days, we have heard umpteenth descriptions and classifications of this budget. Mostly by members of the opposition. Some said it is not people friendly, some said it was designed for the private sector, while others see it will increase the riches of some and pauperize the majority. Mr. Speaker, just a few minutes ago, we heard the Honorable Member who just spoke said it has nothing for the public servants. And just this morning, sir, no one less a person than the former, the Honorable Minister of the Public Service also voiced those very concerns. It makes me wonder, sir, are the public servants a new class of aliens that have arrived in this country? The public servants are Guyanese like every other single Guyanese who will benefit from this budget. And they will also be benefiting, sir. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister of the Public Service, as well as the Honorable Minister Juan Edgel, outlined in detail all of the benefits that will be accorded to every single Guyanese, including the public servants. They are members of this country. They are members of our society, our communities. They are not a separate kettle of fish. They are Guyanese like every other single person and they will benefit equally. They will benefit from the tax reliefs. They will benefit from every, from training, from scholarships, like every other Guyanese in this country. Why do we single them out? Why are we singling them out? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, 
all of these ill-informed statements, Mr. Speaker. And I said ill-informed. Especially by the opposition. Can only be described as the rantings of persons who are either severely mentally challenged or blinded by their zealous political fanaticism. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, the reality is that, as the saying goes, a tiger never changes its stripes. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, the very honorable members who sit here and criticize this budget and speak about democracy. We heard the honorable member, Don Hastings, was very brought up when she was speaking about democracy. Mr. Speaker, these are the very people who, by their selfish, uncaring actions, denied the citizens of this country for five long months the right to choose who they wanted to govern them. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Our citizens were denied the right to have a government of their own choice to protect their livelihood in a timely, methodical manner. That, Mr. Speaker, was democracy under attack. Five long months, Mr. Speaker, of stress, anguish, and frustration. No wonder, sir, that during this protracted waiting game, the incidents of spousal and child abuses spiraled upwards, as the Honorable Member, Ms. Vidya Prasad, will tell you. Mr. Speaker, this 2020 budget is a people's budget. It caters for every sector, every facet of society, every man, woman, and child, irrespective of their ethnicity, religion, age, or political affiliation. I wish to inform the Honorable Member Holder, Mr. Speaker, that this budget is designed to benefit and shall benefit all Guyanese. Mr. Speaker, I totally agree with the Honorable Member, Mr. Sears, when he also said that the people of this country does not and will not countenance squander mania. Truthfully said, Mr. Honorable Member, we now know, Mr. Speaker, that karma is alive and well, as it is because of the very wanton acts of squander mania that he and his colleagues have been relegated to the opposite side of this house. Mr. Speaker, the veteran trade unionists, the Honorable Member Coretta McDonald, vehemently stated that this budget is not a working class budget and that one needed to have a philosophical view of it. Kudos to you, Honorable Member. You can have all the views you need. But let me reiterate that this budget is one that will benefit everyone, whether they be working or non-working class citizens. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member spoke at length about monitoring the 50,000 jobs that will be created. Jobs, Mr. Speaker, that will benefit all of the people, the bauxite workers. She spoke about occupational health and safety, the RDC workers and the state boards. But Mr. Speaker, it is unbelievable but true 
that throughout the entire honorable member's speech, there was not one mention of the word teachers. One would ask why this was so, especially since the honorable member I'm trying not to answer you, Honorable Peter. Especially since the Honorable Member holds the mantle of being the General Secretary of the Teachers' Union. The fact is, Mr. Speaker, after a protracted struggle between the teachers and the then APNU administration for improved benefits, the Guyana Teachers Union made a right about turn and left the teachers out in the proverbial cold. Mr. Speaker, the betrayal of Jesus by Judas for a mere 30 pieces of silver is well documented. But one would never have envisaged that our teachers would have been made to suffer a mirrored betrayal by none other than the esteemed Guyana Teachers Union General Secretary. Mr. Speaker, it is well documented, Honorable Member, that the former PPP administrations have always, and I repeat, always, and the Honorable Member, who is not in the House, I am noticing, Ms. MacDonald, can vouch for that. And it's there for all to see in her speeches that she would have made to the teachers when she said there were better conditions of service that were offered by the People's Progressive Party Civic than that was ever offered by the APNU AFC government. It came from her very lips on several occasions, Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, it is documented that all of the PPPC administrations have always negotiated, negotiated acceptable benefit packages for teachers and we promise that we will continue that trend with or without the meaningful participation of the Guyana Teachers Union. No, Mr. Speaker, no longer must our teachers or our primary educators be deemed greedy or selfish during their quest for improved conditions of service. Never again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our health workers at all the levels must be commended for their dedication. I take this opportunity to thank them for their service to the country. We in this honorable house, as well as the nation at large, all them a debt of gratitude. For they have worked and have continuously done so, tirelessly and beyond the call of duty throughout this COVID epidemic. Mr. Speaker, our discipline services must also be commended for their steadfast role in enforcing the COVID-19 regulations and not as one of the honorable members mentioned, sent only with pellets to threaten the society. Mr. Speaker, the important and increasing demands on these workers dictate that if they are to function effectively they must be appropriately equipped to perform their roles. With this in mind, Mr. Speaker, adequate resources have been allocated within this budget to the relevant sectors. 
And I urge my dear friends who, on the opposite side of this house, who came pre-programmed not to accept the budget, but for your own benefit and the benefit of your communities at large. Have a look at it. Just read it. And not be blinded, as I said before, by that, by that zealous political agenda. Mr. Speaker, while the honorable members on the opposite side are dabbling in semantics about what classifications to attach to this budget, our citizens are becoming increasingly infected with the COVID-19 virus. And some of them are even dying at alarming rates. And I remember, speaker, we will have to dabble in a bit more time for you then. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I crave indulgence for five minutes more for my colleague to conclude her presentation. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable Member, please continue. And Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member on the opposite side when he spoke, he said that during the APNU AFC's reign, the COVID virus was not running and it's now starting to run. Honorable member, please be informed that it could not seem to be running because nobody was being tested. The more you test, the more you will find if it's there. Those who have eyes to see, let them look and you shall find it. And that's what we're doing. That is what we're doing. <coughs> Honorable member, hadn't you been tested? You're lucky we're here that you got tested. Their ignorance is bliss, it's folly to be wise. Mr. Speaker, our citizens lack opportunities for employment or are losing their jobs because of this very virus. Food prices have spiraled beyond the reach of many of these persons and they cannot afford to service their bills. It is therefore imperative, Mr. Speaker, that the relief measures enshrined in this budget is implemented with a lack. Mr. Speaker, one must look at current circumstances. One must look at projections and trends for the future. And one must look at how decisions of the past will impact on the decisions for the future. Mr. Speaker, the People Progressive Party civics governments have always had outstanding success with our programs and policies designed to protect the disadvantaged and the most vulnerable in our society. By improving monitoring and evaluation methods, we will ensure that these programs will remain effective and relevant. We will review our social sector programs in consultation with civil society to ensure that they are channeled to those who need them the most and not that has happened in the previous administration distributed to friends and families. This government, Mr. Speaker, believe that in order to pull ourselves out of the difficulties which the previous administration has put this country through, corruption and rampant squandermania, the collective efforts of all our citizens is required. Mr. Speaker, we are facing dubious times as a nation. This is not the time, Mr. Speaker, for grandstanding and stand-up comedy shows, the likes of which we saw during the presentation by the Honorable Member Duncan. This is the time for serious business. This is the time for nation rebuilding. Mr. Speaker, we all pride ourselves.
Mr. Speaker, we all pride ourselves at being intelligent. That's fine, sir. But a wise man once said that intelligence leads to argument, while wisdom leads to settlement. Let us all, therefore, in this honorable house, aspire to attain more wisdom than intelligence. Let us demonstrate to our citizenry that we in this honorable house are capable of positively leading, not misleading and inciting them along the wrong path. Mr. Speaker, the honorable member, Ms. Tati Hughes, <coughs> mentioned about social cohesion and her words were that based on the events of the last few weeks it is clear to everyone that the PPP is not interested in moving forward Mr. Speaker what is this? No, no one from the PPP was seen at Barbies instigating or inciting racial violence or strife. We were, we were, we were promoting peace, harmony, and we were calling for justice for the victims. Mr. Speaker, why do we want to place our muds on the faces of other persons? Mr. Speaker, social cohesion had been the mantra of the new AFC government. Mr. Speaker, let us, let us in this honorable house, let us behave as leaders. Let us teach our people the right meaning of social cohesion and let us encourage them to practice it. Mr. Speaker, on March the 2nd, 2020 the people of guyana rejected rejected the up new styled politics of deception betrayal greed and arrogance waste and more so mismanagement they rejected mr speaker officially sanctioned corruption they rejected squandermania they rejected discrimination he needs it a lot of it. They rejected immortality. They rejected inequality. They rejected nepotism and cronyism. The people, Mr. Speaker, thus voted emphatically and unequivocally for equity and prosperity for all. They asked for, Mr. Speaker, and they deserve progress, harmony, and social peace. The people, by their own will, Mr. Speaker, chose the PPPC as their preferred government to lead them into a prosperous, happy future. Mr. Speaker, all of our citizens must be assured that this PPPC government, their government, is committed to dedicating all of its energies towards protecting them, strengthening their democracy and the rule of law, incentivizing growth and job creation, enhancing their welfare, creating a society that is bereft of racial discord, and to mold a country where everyone sees themselves as one people, one nation, all working together to realize one destiny. I therefore, Mr. Speaker, commend this budget as one that will obviously change all of our lives for the better. I thank you.